Well, this evening, brethren, I would like to open our meeting by encouraging each one of you that Jesus communicates with his people at these meetings. Um, He told us this morning to set our affections on things above and to mortify, therefore, our members which are upon the earth. So he communicated already and then many other things. And I know you already know these things, but it's good to be reminded about how precious these meetings really are. That uh, this is a time that, that the Lord has given us that we need to take advantage of because not all have the opportunity to take advantage of these things. So if you're given this opportunity, then it's wise to take advantage of, of these uh, meetings with Jesus. Throughout the world, he is ministering to the saints. And he does this among those who seek after righteousness, who love him, and who have given up their lives to follow after him. Uh, John eleven fifty three and 54 says, After the Jews took counsel together to put Jesus to death, from that day forward, forth he no longer walked openly among the Jews, but went thence into a country near to the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. So he, he stopped meeting with the Jews then openly, and he took his disciples out and continued to meet with them. And we see other examples of this in the scriptures. The crowds did not get the meteor things, and and, and we've seen this. But uh, these things, uh, and they didn't get these things because they really weren't interested in them. They weren't looking for these things. So Jesus didn't just give them to them. Uh, They were more interested in what Jesus could do for them at the moment, not looking for eternal things, things that will last. Those that have come to hear of these eternal things, these treasures that can only be found in heavenly places, those that have put their effect, set their affection upon uh, things above, these are the ones that Jesus will take privately aside and open up the very kingdom of God. And he can do this while we're gathered together. He may give you a special nugget of truth while you're here. These truths that Jesus gives, they offend some, but they draw others. For those that will follow him wherever he may go, he will share with them the deep things of God. And the more you are with him, the more he will give you. So it stands to reason that if you want more from God, then you need to be with Jesus more. You must abide with him. So this is for those who desire to sit at his feet, those that love his appearing, those that take up their cross daily. These are the ones he takes privately aside and speaks to. I spoke a few weeks ago about Jesus sitting uh, down at meat together with his disciples. Well, he teaches us privately, individually, and in unison during this time. So we can be meeting together, and he can privately speak to each one of you, or he can privately speak together to the body. He has also given different brethren something to communicate that was given only to them to, to, uh, to give to the body. So our Lord is a wonderful master. He graciously gives to us from his bountiful supply these unsearchable riches of God. And if you notice in the scriptures, uh, Jesus taught his disciples some of the most profound truths when they were privately meeting with him. Luke 9, 10, 11 said, And the apostles, when they were returned, told him all they had done, and he took them and went aside privately into a desert place belonging to the city called Bethsaida, And the people, when they knew it, followed him, and he received them and spake unto them of the kingdom of God and healed them that had need of healing. So notice here that the people followed Jesus out to where he had taken the disciples. And uh, what are some of the things that we see in the scriptures that Jesus uh, told his disciples while meeting privately with them? And I know I won't cover all of them, but I just want to mention a few of them. The whole chapter of Matthew 24, 51 verses, Jesus is speaking to his disciples privately. This is when he uh, preached the Mount of, on the Mount of Olives. Matthew 24, 3 says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of, and of the end of the world? So this is an important thing that we have learned that Jesus told the disciples privately. Um, it Mark thirteen three says in this account, and he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple. Peter, James, and John, and Andrew asked him privately. So the disciples also asked him privately for some things. I find it interesting that uh, whenever he started to to speak with them, that the first thing that he said is, "Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many." 
We too have heard this message today, and we are prompted by Christ to preach this very same message, although it's not received by many people. But this is one of the first things that Jesus told them on this sermon that, that he preached privately to the disciples that, to take heed that they not be deceived. And he went on during this time to tell them many things that we, we know of today that we wouldn't even know unless the disciples would have told these things that Jesus uh, told them. This is when he told about the, uh, that you'll hear wars and rumors of wars and, and uh, nations shall rise up against nation, that, that they would be delivered up and, and be afflicted and, and they may be killed. And that because of the iniquity uh, shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold and that many false prophets shall arise. Um, this is when he told them, he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Um, some of the other things that he spoke was that um, he told about that the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. He didn't tell this to the crowds. This was to the disciples. So uh, he also told them, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And this is when he told them, Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come, and to be ready. Mark six thirty one says, And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place, and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into a desert place by ship privately. So this time to be with Jesus privately gave the disciples needed rest from the world. And this is what we get as we meet together with him. A time to be alone with Jesus with no distractions. A time to be nourished with spiritual food. Brother Ricky spoke this morning about our spiritual nourishment. And we can have this time as we gather um, together. And this is needed for, I put it in these words, our spiritual sanity. We are uh, bombarded from things of the earth all through the week. And uh, this is a day that we can gather and we can just set aside just to be totally focused on the Lord. Though our lives are hid in Christ and, and we live our lives um, in the Lord. But this day we, we try to focus all things and not be distracted from the world. Jesus also uh, spoke with his disciples privately a time whenever um, the man had came and his uh, son had a, had a, 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 the deaf and dumb spirit in him. And the disciples could not heal him, couldn't make the spirit come out. And the disciples asked him when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast him out? So they asked him that. And he says, and they departed thence and passed through Galilee, and he would not that any man should know it. For he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. So he told his disciples this privately. And even though they didn't understand these things at the moment, Jesus still taught them these things. So there may be things that you hear when you're meeting together with the saints that you don't quite understand. But Jesus will still teach these things. Do not be discouraged because he may open them up to you later. And if you want to know, he will teach you. Amen. It says Mark 9, 32 said the disciples, they, they understood not that same and they were afraid to ask. But we've been encouraged to ask the Lord to give us understanding. And we can be confident that he will give us understanding if we ask. It may not come that day. It may not come that year. I, I've experienced personally that there's things I didn't understand, and as I pondered on them and meditated on them, then the Lord opened them up, you know, maybe in stages, maybe at one time. <clears throat> and he usually uses the brethren to do this, things that they said, and puts them together. Um, Luke 10, 21 through 24 is Jesus, he says, In that hour Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it, for it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he whom the Son will reveal him. And he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. 
For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. So this too was a revelation that was given to the disciples privately. And let us not forget the Lord's table. When Jesus took the disciples aside, he met privately with them. Yeah. It wasn't all the crowds. It was the ones that he desired to be with. And uh, isn't it a wonderful thing to know that the Lord desires to be with you? Why would you not want to be with the Lord when he wants to be with you? And this, um, so if you want to um, get things from the Lord, you've got to meet together with him. You've got to be where he's at. This also includes uh, this ministry that, that many have of uh, recording things. And I'm not talking about just here at our assembly. There's, there, there's brethren all over the world, and they're doing different kinds of ministries. But if there's a ministry available to you, you have to be there. So, like, if you, have, if you receive an MP3 that has something on it to hear, if you don't listen to it, you will not be ministered to. Um, if you have a Bible, if you don't read it, how are you going to know what it says? The Lord won't minister. He, he doesn't just give you these things. There is a labor involved in, in this ministry from the Lord. Amen. Jesus still speaks today from heaven, and, and he is revealing God's purpose to those he chooses, making a people for himself ready, preparing the bride. And he uses ministers, just as he always has, speak messengers to uh, speak these things. Uh, and he's always done this through all the ages. We can see this, this in the record. So this evening, let us uh, listen with attentive ear as to what Jesus will say. He is versatile in that he can speak many things to different people according to their needs and their level of understanding at the time of their hearing. The Holy Spirit uses these things you have heard uh, before to continue to teach you of our God. And he is meeting privately here with us, even though there's many that may have had opportunity to meet and decided not to meet with him. They will not get these things that, that he is dispersing tonight. So if you choose not to meet with the Lord, you will not get the things that he has. He will not give them to you. Um, so let us continue to uh, in this work of believing and making ourselves ready for the coming of the Lord. Amen. Okay, Sister Debbie, uh, let me have...